All right, let's get serious. Do you guys know which scent profile conveys mellowness, elegance, and confidence? By the way, this scent profile, this aroma, is the most sought after and searched scent on Google. We're talking about the note of lavender. All 25 choices I'm about to share with you have lavender as the main note and most predominant aroma in those fragrances with, of course, other elements, you know, engaging with that particular lavender. We're talking about fougeres, barbershops, and neo-fougeres. And of course, this scent profile happens to be my favorite, and this particular fragrance or scent profile, in my opinion, separates the man from the boys. So if you guys want to know what these 25 choices are, I broke it down for you as I always do to make it easier. Stick around, they're coming up next. For those of you really getting into fougeres, barbershop, whatever you want to call it, if you want to know the main structure, the main construction of these fragrances, it's pretty much citruses, mostly bergamot, lavender, and plenty of it in the heart, and of course the base yolk moss, which is green, earthy, and leathery. So within those 25 choices, I broke it down into giving you guys five danky, leathery, pungent fougeres that are very, you know, timeless and classic, so I'm giving you guys just five because I know most of you think these are dated. I don't think so, but I'm gonna limit them to five. Then we're gonna jump to 10 barbershop soapy, clean, that powder, you know, that talcum powder feel that you get when you get a fresh, you know, haircut at the barbershop. And last but not least, we're gonna highlight 10 neo fougere, modern style fougeres that are infused with maybe booze or some more modern twists, if you will. We're gonna do this chronologically because why not? So starting off here with the first pick for classic fougeres. I'm gonna give you Pierre Cardin uh, Port Monsieur. This is basically a microphone as well, so it's got dual functions. All joking aside, 1972 creation, really great. Uh, besides the great lavender and the uh, spices, it's also very creamy in the dry down. We have sandalwood, there's some cloves here. Very spicy and also animalistic. You must really love the genre to appreciate this, but I think this is a masterpiece from 1972. Don't get much love in the fragrance world anymore, but I'm telling you, even what's out there today and available for you to purchase, it's still very good. But it was originally released in 1972 from Pierre Cardin's, Pierre Cardin's Port Monsieur. Second classic fougere and timeless masterpiece, in my opinion, goes to this 1978 cre creation, which I think single-handedly shaped most of the 80s, especially early 80s, a lot of people I knew was wearing this and still does to this day. We're talking about Azaro Pour Homme from 1978. I absolutely love this fragrance. What was done here is just incredible. The fougere genre and profile was taken in and added this note of anise, which added these really incredible spicy facets and nuances never before seen in this particular genre. Amazing stuff right here. Animalistic, pungent, green, earthy, just a powerhouse of a scent. 1984, a American brand called Giorgio Beverly gave us Giorgio Beverly Hills for men. Uh, this particular fragrance, very underrated, um, very much a hidden gem in the world of perfumery. And it's again going to be a classic fougere, but with added notes of dried fruits, honey. So it's not gonna be gourmand or anything like that. It's still gonna be a fougere green with all the characteristics, the beautiful lavender. But I, I guess those dried fruits and that honey facet that was added to this fragrance makes it really a standout, classic, timeless, but also a little easier to take in. Not as animalistic, not, not as dark or dank as most fougeres of old. Really great stuff. Whatever you find today in the market, it's not gonna be this darker color because this is an older bottle. It's gonna be more of a light green, but it's still very good for what you're getting. And might I add, a cheapy and also very good. At the fourth spot, this classic fougere is just amazing. Another hidden gem that I'm sharing with you here today. One of my secrets, this is from Gianfranco Fer, an Italian brand that's called GFF or Gianfranco Ohm. This is an absolutely masterpiece of a fragrance. Powerful, pungent, animalistic. What I love about this one is if you have a hankering for more floral fougeres, this has a heart of gold with ylang ylang, rose, jasmine, so it amplifies the floral aspect of this fragrance with the lavender and the other fougere elements that you get with the classic fougere. Stuff is gold. By the way, guys, a little side note here for fun. My wife is across, you know, helping me film this video. And she was like, please don't spray all of them because the house right now is atomic. And by the way, fougere is not one of her favorite uh, fragrance profiles. It is mine. So the fifth choice here for the classic fougere is one that I love and it's somewhat new because it was released in 2016, but it captures beautifully the profile and the timeless 
goodness of fougeres. You even have the fern here, because fougere means fern-like. This is from the house of Amouage. This is Bracken Man, a fragrance fit for a king, guys. It's fougere to the T. And by the way, all barbershops are fougeres. However, not all fougeres are barbershops. A little food for thought there. So these fragrances are gonna be clean, soapy, you know, it's gonna be that fougere with the citrus, the lavender, and the oak moss for the most part, but then you're gonna have like a clean vetiver or you're gonna have some soapy facets and qualities that are particular to this barbershop kind of a profile, including that soapy and talcum powder kind of a feel that you get when you go to the barbers. The first choice here is from, again, this is gonna be chronologically, you know, through the years. This is actually from 1840, ladies and gentlemen way back when this is a fragrance that was actually signature scent from jfk john fitzgerald kennedy this is going to be jockey club this has been around for many many years and i would love to for you guys to try this if you haven't experienced this fragrance it's going to be animalistic it's going to be pungent it's got a beautiful note of honey in here but it's like a wild honey it's animalistic it's pungent very green even you know aggressive to some noses there's pine cone in here but when it dries down, it's a magical juice. This is from Castle and Massey Jockey Club. So if you really wanna get into the classics, ladies and gentlemen, search this fragrance Jockey Club. It's affordable, and it's gonna give you a glimpse of old world goodness. Next up, we have a fragrance that was originally released in 1882, and it's a recreation by Rodrigo Ferrero, the um, amazing perfumer. It's called Fougere Royale from Who Be Gone. So of course, it's very hard to be able to experience the original from 1882. So this is the next best thing. It's clean, it's soapy, it's very elegant and also fruity. Amazing stuff, Fougere Royale at the second spot here from 2010. Next up, we have a fragrance from 1936 and this was actually one of Elvis Presley's favorite signature scents. It's going to be called Canoe and it's from Dana, Dana Parfums, also American brand. This is the most powdery one, very aromatic, geranium, which adds this minty facet, a lot of herbal components, but it's very powdery, most likely the, the top powdery fragrance here on this list. It's gonna give you a great, you know, fresh haircut type of a feel when you spray this fragrance. So if you like clean, powdery, soapy scents, this is a great one to check out. And again, very inexpensive. Next up, we have a fragrance that was released in 1968, also a fragrance that was enjoyed by Elvis Presley. And what I like to say about this fragrance is I think this was the predecessor of what Azaro became. So a lot of the elements that I love in Azaro Pro Homme are also found here, including that anise note, but it's actually a little fresher. There's something about this fragrance that I just can't get enough. Say what you will, this smells great on me, gives me compliments, believe it or not, and I most love to wear this as an aftershave. And it's from Fabergé, and it's called Brut for Men. Enough said, guys, check this out. Believe me, a lot of people like to make fun of this, but this has been around for all these years for a reason, and it's one of the top selling aftershaves in the world to this day. Next up, this is from 1973. This was, or probably still is, my dad's signature scent. He wore this fragrance so much. I remember when I smell this, it reminds me of him. And I have tremendous recollection and memories of when I used to kiss him. And I used to get, you know, a glimpse of amazingness of this of this particular scent. This is Paco Rabanne's Pour Homme. Unlike a Zara Pour Homme, this is not gonna be as spicy and pungent and dark. This is gonna be actually a little lighter. You got the honey facet here. Um, it's not all the hillock, but it's a little bright in the beginning with the citruses. And again, it's gonna be soapy, clean, dry down, which is amazing, it smells great, it's elegant, it's confident, and it's definitely very inviting as well. Now we jump to 1982. This is a classic, classic fragrance that's still to this day, I know people in my family that wears this as a signature scent. It's one of the, you know, die hard type of scents. No matter how old this gets, people still talk about it, they still love it, including yours truly. This is 1982 Dracar Noir, I never actually tried the original Dracar, I think was released in 1972. I never tried that one, so I don't know what, what to compare. But this one here is this great, soapy, clean, inviting, lavender. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit aldehylic. Just, it checks all the boxes. It's very masculine, very manly, very clean, very, very um, compliment inducing, believe it or not. To this day, this to me does not smell aged. It smells timeless. Now, if you don't like a Zara Perome, if you don't like a very pungent and very heavy knees type of a fougere and you want something that's easier on the nose, I like to call this a Zara Light. And this is actually from amazing perfumer Jacques Cavalier. It's called Rive Gauche from Yves Saint Laurent. It's like a, you know, a barbershop's pole. So it's going to be exactly that, a masterfully done 
barbershop type scent. It is a little bit spicy, a little bit herbal, but everything is done. It smells like a shaving cream. It's that simple. It's like a beautiful shaving cream that smells clean, inviting, appealing, and the spicy notes are done to perfection here. Moving up to 2005, this to me is a classic modern masterpiece. This is called Invasion Barbare from MDCI Parfums. You have Julius Caesar's bust up top. And what this is, is I love what they did here. They added the ginger note. They added a violet leaf note along with the lavender and all the other elements that you get with a fougere. But it gave this really incredible, unique, almost metallic facet to this fougere, which to me is one of the best barbershops ever made. So if you're looking for a classic yet modern with that barbershop feel, this is your fix right here. Now, if you like the metallic note in your barbershop fragrances, I would highly suggest you guys to check out this 2010 release from Penhaligans. It's called Sartorial. It's like a made to measure jacket. It smells perfectly great, just like a beautiful haircut. A little powdery. You got that talcum powder vibe with the honey notes, the leather, and the myrrh. So it's a little bit smoky. Not gonna be for everyone, but again, I love that sense of made to measure and cleanliness that this fragrance evokes. If you follow this channel for any length of time, you know how much I love this fragrance. In my opinion, one of the most underrated Creed fragrances in the world. This is a must try. If you love the barbershop feel, there's nothing like this. This is Viking, not Cologne, the original Viking from 2017. I love the mint, the geranium, the pink pepper, the rose, the absinthe boozy, you know, note a core that it gives you. It is just very intricate and very exclusive. There's nothing in the market that smells quite like this. So what Viking reminds me of, it reminds me of this particular fragrance, Club Men Virgin Island Bay Rum. So it's very spice. You also have some cinnamon here, but it's, it's just something else. With the cedar, the vetiver in the base, it's strong, it's powerful in a very subtle and understated way. Elegant and masculinity in the bottle. That's why I went with a big uh, flacon. I could just you know make myself a decant leave it on me and then throughout the day I could just refresh and smell great, you know, all day long. Now we're gonna talk about the Neo Fougere fragrances, which is pretty much a Fougere with a modern twist. And we're gonna talk about these twists, what they are and what makes them modern like Fougeres. Starting here with this 1988 creation, which is a masterpiece to this day, loved worldwide. And it's a fragrance that made a statement and still does. This is going to be Davidoff's Cool Water, which is pretty much, a lot of people may argue that this is an aquatic fragrance but it's pretty much a fougere because you're gonna have the lavender, the greens, the citrus with a tinge of an aquatic, you know, undertone. Very refreshing, very uh, cold smelling. So it's like a cold fougere. That's why I'm saying this is going to be a, a fougere that's aquatic and, and has this cooling effect. Incredible stuff right here from 1988. Fast forward to 1995, Francis Kurtjean, amazing perfumer, comes up with this fragrance that to this day, again, loved worldwide. And it's a fragrance that, in my opinion, also deserves to be considered a masterpiece in the world of fougeres. This is modern neo-fougere to the T. Of course, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mans. Enough said. If you know this fragrance, that particular lavender with the mint and the vanilla and the greens in the bottom makes this a standout fragrance to this day. We're gonna stick with Mr. Kurtjean here with his own line, MFK's, you know, Maison, Frasen Skurjan. It's going to be masculine Puriel. I love this fougere because you have all the elements of the great fougeres, but then you have this beautiful suede-like leather in the base that's supple and also fruity. Now here's a niche company that's quality through and through, and I haven't spoken about this brand in quite a while, and this is going to be my favorite from this collection. If you love fougeres, you must try this. It's simple as that. It's called Egypt. I've talked about this fragrance on this channel. It's made top fall lists throughout the years. And it's just an incredible, you know, crowd stopping fougere because it has all the qualities of the fougere, including this beautiful honey with dried fruits and spices and a gorgeous boozy sandalwood dry down. Amazing stuff right here, guys. You gotta try this. Now this next one here, not one, but two amazing perfumers got together to create this fragrance. We're talking about Hamid Merati Kashani with Olivier Cresp. You know these guys produce incredible fragrances and this is one of them. This is a modern fougere and this is going to be Sadly. Sadly is this sparkly, fizzy, compliment inducing type scent which has a lot of the ingredients from the, from the you know, classic fougere but they added this note of ambroxan in the base with some sweet fruits up top, making this again fizzy, sparkly, and very easy to please. Amazing stuff, guys. 
Coming in at number seven from the new Fougere style fragrances is going to be Tom Ford's Beau de Jour. Tom Ford needs no introduction. It's quality through and through, refinement, classy. That's what this fragrance is. It's the barbershop feel with added notes of patchouli and lavender in the base, which adds this powdery kind of a feel to the fragrance, but extremely sensual as well. Speaking of underrated gems, this is definitely one of them. My favorite release in the designer side of things over the past couple of years. We're talking Pasha de Cartier, Pasha Parfum de Cartier. Don't get it mixed up with the original because this is the one you want. We're talking pine needles. We're talking whiskey that stays throughout the life of the fragrance. So if you like boozy, this is it. Very creamy in the base with sandalwood, lavender, the greens, the citrus is up top, but that boozy with the pine needle is where it's at. Whiskey and pine needles, creamy, elegant. You're gonna smell like a million bucks. There's no ways about it. We're gonna stick with the fougere that has a neo kind of a vibe with the booziness, which I love. This is going to be Diurno from the house of Milano Fragans, which is a Italian house from Milan. And it adds all the beautiful facets of a great fougere, but it's enhanced by the Amaretto, which is an almond liqueur that just adds this very sensual and unique vibe to this fougere that you can't find anywhere else. Just outstanding juice right here. This last, this second to last one here is from a very popular designer brand, which of course all of you watching this know this brand. And you know the main fragrance that started this whole line of sequels. Of course, we're talking about the house of Dior, Christian Dior, and this is going to be Sauvage, but Elixir, which was also released last year. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be nothing like Sauvage EDT, EDP or Parfum. This here is going to be your classic fougere, green, pungent, resinous, but also with a modern twist. They added this benzoin vanillin kind of a dry down here that's very discerning, very distinguished, and very refined to this fragrance. It's long lasting, one of the most powerful designer fragrances out there. But again, you must enjoy the fougere green pungent to appreciate this because ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those fragrances that you're gonna walk into a room, they're gonna know you're there. And when you leave, hours afterwards, they're gonna know you were there. That's that kind of a fragrance. And sticking with that kind of a present type of a fragrance that it's just like an entity, very powerful, this is one that you also should look into if you do like this type of a new fougere. This is going to be Apex Parfum from Roja Parfums. You can go with the Eau de Parfum or the Parfum, or you can do like I like to do, which is layer them too. But again, it's gonna be green, pungent. It reminds me of a Italian Cypress from, some, from Tom Ford, which has been discontinued for years. And it's one of my favorite, like top five Tom Fords of all time. If you appreciate some of the greats of old, like Davidoff's Zeno or Tom Ford's Italian Cypress, this is just like that fragrance. And when you combine this one with the other Eau de Parfum, it just becomes nuclear. So if you love that scent profile that has a neo tobacco booziness, along with all the green, the piney, and all the facets of a great lavender fougere, this is definitely one you don't want to disregard. So there you have it, 25 great choices of a fougere, lavender predominant fragrances, which I think is just amazing, which you know evokes timeless, evokes classy, evokes confidence. If you like what I'm talking about here, if you have a taste similar to mine, definitely check one of these out or all of these out. And you could do that if you don't wanna buy the bottles, if you wanna just live with the fragrance, get a decant from perfume.com. Enjoy details below for discounts, fast shipping, incredible customer service. And of course, a lot of the Fougeres I talked about here, like Milano Fragrance and all the niche brands or some of the niche brands will actually be featured at Scent Explore 2022, which by the time you watch on this, is probably like a week or a week and a half away from the actual show, which is December 2nd and 3rd. Check out details below. And of course, I hope to see you either in person or virtually. As always, guys, thanks so much for your support. If you haven't already, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you get these videos straight into your feed. I'll see you guys here very soon. Take care.